Hello and welcome into this video where we're going to cover a question that was requested on YSAM. And we're going to jump into it talking about basic probability rules, um, but we're specifically going to get into addition rule. So let's go through the question real quick and then we're going to look at what those rules are all about um, in accordance with this problem. So it asks us to utilize the spinner or check out the spinner below to find the probability that were asked that's right below the spinner and thank you to the person that provided the uh, picture as well. So it says that we're going to find the probability of getting the following number or numbers after a single spin. So keep that in mind, we're only spinning this one time, okay? And of the events that are involved, we're only gonna deal with that as a single spin, okay? In a single uh, situation. statement it says to find the probability of getting a three landing on a three or landing on a two all right and the key word is or and this is how i know that it's addition rule that we're going to apply now i do want to quickly showcase a little flow chart i've created a while back as a way to help you with uh you know basically deciding which rule to go with so please take a moment to pause here screenshot, write it down, do whatever you need to do to, to take note of this so that you have this for future use um, as a way to help you in your notes and your homework and then eventually quizzes and exams. And let me zoom in real quick so you can see, again, kind of the path in my mind that I took in order to figure out which rule to go with. Now, it may be a little bit different in your textbook, but from what I learned and what I've seen in a textbook that I use, they tend to refer to the first rule as rule one and the other rule as rule two, okay? So you have addition and multiplication. And I use little phrases to help differentiate between the two utilizing the keywords. So for addition, the keyword is something like or, okay? For multiplication is gonna be something like and. For example, you could have a statement that says, find the probability that both and there's that word again referring to and. So for addition rule, um, rules, we have rule one, which involves disjointed events, or the term is mutually exclusive. And this is where you simply add the, prob the eighth probability of each type of uh, item that's being selected or picked or whatever. In addition rule two, it involves jointed events. This means that the two or however many events are not mutually exclusive. They're sharing something. They're sharing items, they're sharing characteristics, and that's how you know to use this formula, <clears throat> which is simply the first rule, but then you're subtracting the overlap, which we call the intersection, okay? And then again, here's an example to represent what that means. But we're focused on rule one. So again, pause the video if you wanna capture that information, but we're gonna look at how do we set things up here to solve it, okay? so. Let me just get the screen right. All right. So we're going to go ahead now and figure out what does each event represent as their own probability. So again, this is addition rule. This is rule one because three and two don't share any characteristics or items in the situation. Okay. Um, and we're gonna get into related to the classical probability setup of how many of each event divided by the total sample space. Okay, this this I'll use X instead of or E, let's say E. So the probability of an event is equal to the number of that event divided by the total sample space. Okay. So first and foremost, we know that this is going to be the general setup. We're going to find the probability of getting a three and add that to the probability of getting a two. Now, the question is, what do those probabilities look like? So we're going to utilize this right here to. So first is how many threes are there? There's only one three. All right. Now, how many in the total sample space? and we can just count it, or we can just look at the total, the, the last number, <laughs> basically, right? That, that shows us that there's 12. So always at the beginning of these type of problems, 
And really all the problems in statistics, when you're dealing with a sample space, a data set, whatever you want to call it, you always have something, you, you have to know something about the total amount that's really important. And especially when you get into probability of any kind, you have to know what out of the total is, is you know, essentially being looked at. Okay, now with probability of getting a three, since there's only one three, there's only one of this particular event that could appear. So therefore, using this over here, the probability is one out of 12. And what does that mean? That means there's one twelfth, right, representing the three. And that goes for all of them. And this goes back again to classical probability. That is, um, there is an equal chance for each type of event. This is definitely the case because each of these slices in the spinner is equally sliced. So they all have an equal chance. But not only that, there's just a single one of each number. All right. So it's the same thing for the two. There's only one two out of 12. So one out of 12 is also its probability. So now that we have the numbers to place in the notation of each type of probability, we can now actually work it out. And believe it or not, this is the easy part. Okay, the quote unquote harder part is setting it up. Now this is one of the easier uh, problems. So do as many of these type of problems as you can before you start getting into the harder ones or in your own pacing of the, of the class, you know. Um, take your time with it because it does get tougher. So it, when you master this level of, of problem, you know, level, <laughs> math problem, you'll, you'll be good with the other ones because it takes a lot of creativity and thinking outside the box, okay? So we have a setup to add these two, and now we're going to do just that. So since the denominators are the same, we can just simply add the top numbers, which gives us 2 out of 12. So technically we're done, but and they don't necessarily have to say this, but they say it anyway, please enter your answer as a reduced fraction. So what that means is whether they say this or not explicitly, tend to want the simplest version of a fraction anyway. That's just a commonality in that. So always make sure if you're gonna provide your answer as a fraction, go ahead and try to reduce it if you can. All right, sometimes you can't. Like if you have a fraction like seven out of nine, all right, notice they're both prime numbers, but they don't share any factors to reduce it. So therefore, this is as simplified as possible. But two out of 12, we can reduce that. Okay, so what we're we going to do, we're going to basically take out, right, in order to reduce this fraction down simpler to simpler numbers, we're going to take out the factor of two that's shared between two and 12 leaving one out of six, okay? Now, visually speaking, so again, we're, we're pretty much down there, that's the answer, but visually speaking, this is what this means, okay? We've added these two probabilities, so we're looking at the slices, these two slices together, basically, all right? So then if you count, this is one, and then here's another two together, right? Four, let's say four and five. So that's two, three, four, five, six. So we just reduced it down from 12 to six parts in that spinner. All right. If you wanted to make it more concrete, but that is your answer. All right. And that's how we approach this problem to solve it. I hope you found this helpful and let us know if you have any questions.